Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV. and a very warm welcome to a brand new series of Practical Caravan TV. Now, as ever, we'll be partnering with Practical Motorhome TV to give you an hour of touring goodness. But before we hand over to Niall and his motorhomes, it's time to talk tourers. It's been a busy summer and we've been up and down the country looking at every important new caravan. With that in mind, here's what we've got coming up in the show. David Motten tests the cut price crossover whose hefty curb weight should appeal to caravanners. We'll take a trip to Shropshire to visit Ludlow Touring Park and I'll check out the revised Luna Quasar 544. But first, we're off to Hull, where earlier in the summer I got a sneak preview of the updated Coachman Vision range. This is the 2017 Coachman Vision 450. So what's new? Well, from the outside, not a huge amount. There are those rather smart new graphics. But if you spend an extra 500 pounds, you can opt for the Vision Plus, which comes with a rather smart new front sunroof for the first time on the Vision range. There have been other changes, however. The 380 has been dropped from the range, which means that this 450 is now the entry level to the Coachman brand. It's a good looking van too. I'd like to have seen some external locker access on this side, but it's good to see that all the services are on the other side. But the real changes take place inside the van. The first change strikes you as soon as you come through the door, and it's here, this little alcove, which is ideal when you're leaving the van. We've got a mirror to check how you look, and a little shelf to grab your keys on the way out. There's also, underneath it, a useful cupboard. It's the perfect place to put things like your motor mover remote control or your hitch lock, so they're ready for you as soon as you arrive on site. Now all of this has been made possible by a major rejig of the bathroom. If you're familiar with the washroom of the old 450, this new one will come as quite a shock. Gone is the old round beam me up Scotty shower cubicle, replaced by a huge square one on the near side of the van. There's not one but two bathroom cabinets and a large mirror with a spotlight above. The sink is a good size too, and one of the qualities of the old washroom remains, and that's masses of storage. There's a huge wardrobe with a couple of drawers beneath, and it even includes a small laundry basket inside. And on the near side, you'll also find the storage for the table. It's a bit of a walk from the lounge, but then this isn't a very big van. In the old 450, you had to signal to the people in the kitchen that you were coming out of the washroom to avoid sending them sprawling. But with the reorganised floor plan placing the wardrobe here, there's now a bit of space between the doorway and the kitchen area, which is great news. Otherwise, however, the kitchen is pretty much as it was, which is also great news because it's a fantastic kitchen. Over on the near side here, we've got a good sized cutlery and utensil drawer above the fridge with a large cabinet next to it. But talking of large, check out this space here. This sideboard is enormous. There's space for your TV, for which all the sockets are here, but also to use it as worktop as well, unless your TV is absolutely massive. Above, we've got the microwave, which in the old days was hidden in a cupboard in Coachman's, but now they've put it in its own sort of feature surround. I must say I prefer it being hidden away, but this is a good bit of branding. Alongside, there's an overhead locker, while over here on the off side, we've got more worktop space, and you can have yet more if you keep the lid down on the sink, which contains its own little storage spot for the drainer. Above, there's a couple of really good sized lockers, and below, a big drawer and a couple of cupboards. Like the rest of the Coachman range, we've got a separate oven and grill and a dual fuel hob. I really like this smart splashback. It stops this feeling like an entry level van, and you only spot things like the one plug socket give the game away. Although, however, you could always use this one here and the shelf to pop your kettle. This particular 450 does without the optional front sunroof, and that means you do end up with a bit of a blank wall up there, but it is plenty bright enough without it. We've got a window on each side, a triple front window, and a decent sized skylight overhead. Plus, of course, we've got these rather pleasant fabrics, which are lovely and light, and also feel very hard wearing. And they give a really good ambience inside the van. One other detail I like is these large drawers, much better than the usual slimline ones that can't really fit much more than a couple of magazines in. 
There's a socket down low and another up here on this rather substantial front shelf. It's a very nice detail. One detail we can't appreciate today, however, is the new halo effect perimeter lighting, which runs all the way around the top of the van, because unfortunately we're not hooked up to any electricity. These sofas at night make good sized single beds, or you pull out a bed base from beneath the offside sofa and it turns into a very large double bed. Whichever way you configure it, you'll have a reading light because there's one, two, three, four around the van. Storage wise, there are four overhead lockers featuring Coachman's new cranked door design. But sadly, there's no underbed access unless you lift up the sofa. The Vision range has carved out its own unique niche. It's much better finished and better spec than the budget offerings from other manufacturers, yet it undercuts most mid-range rivals on price. And the tweaks to the 450 serve only to significantly improve what was already an excellent couple's caravan. How much do you think this crossover costs? 20,000 pounds? 25,000 maybe? In fact, the list price is much, much less. The Sangyong Corando range starts from just 15,995. You have to wonder, is there a catch? If there is, it's not easy to spot from the spec sheet. A few months back, Sangyong introduced a new 2.2 litre diesel engine, giving the Corando 295 pounds feet of torque as well as improved economy and lower emissions. For a crossover of this size, the Corando is very heavy, with a curb weight of 1,701 kilograms, despite this being the two-wheel drive version. And don't forget, 4x4s are available. That gives an 85% match figure of 1,446 kilograms, and the legal towing limit is two tonnes. We've been towing a Swift Challenger 590 with a mass in running order of 1,410 kilograms. The Corando can tow it from 30 to 60 miles per hour in 12.2 seconds. That's a pretty good turn of speed, but the engine is very noisy. As well as being more powerful, the new engine is also more economical. The Sangyong's official combined figure is 53.3 mpg. We achieved 28.3 mpg towing on a mixture of single and dual carriageway A roads. So far so good, but there is a but coming. The Sangyong's stability at speed is a weakness. Catch a gust of wind or hit a bump and it can start to fidget. It just doesn't feel as comfortable and composed as a Kia Sportage or a Hyundai Tucson. The Corando doesn't cope with the lane change as well as these other Korean crossovers either lurching from one direction to the other, with the stability control activating at surprisingly low speeds. It's not as plush inside as these cars either, but that's hardly surprising given the price difference. For the money, the Corando is well screwed together and there's plenty of room up front and for rear seat passengers. The flat floor means the Corando is better than most rivals at transporting three rear seat passengers. The boot is a decent size too. You can't argue with the Sangyong's value for money and the new engine is a definite improvement. It's powerful and reasonably economical. We have reservations about the way the car tows though, in particular its high speed stability and its performance in emergency manoeuvres. But you know what? It would be churlish to complain too loudly when the car costs a fiver less than £16,000. You're getting a lot of car for your money. You'd have to be a little bit of a lunar nerd to spot it by these rather swoopy new graphics, but this is the 2017 Lunar Quasar. As you can see, not a huge amount has changed, but that's not such a bad thing. We've still got an external wet locker here with a 230 volt power point, another external locker at the back, alloy wheels, an Alco hitch stabiliser and secure wheel lock receiver, but of course no ATC stability control. And all the services are right over there on the offside. There is one new model to the range with a transverse island bed on a twin axle chassis, but today we're looking at something a little bit more traditionalist, the 544 with a fixed near side double bed. The most obvious differences are to be found here in the lounge. Gone are the greens of last year's Quasar replaced by these rather nice oatmeal neutral furnishings complemented by fetching blue curtains and scatter cushions. It all feels very classy and really rather grown up, certainly not in any way entry level. Look closely and you'll spot a few other differences, 
For a start, you no longer make up the front double bed by pulling slats out from underneath the chest. Instead, you pull out the bed bases from beneath each sofa to meet in the middle, and it makes a good sized double bed. One of the nice things about a traditional fixed nearside bed layout, rather than the more popular transverse island bed, is that actually you end up with a much more spacious lounge area. One neat detail that Luna has managed to retain is, despite those pull out bed frames, there are still drop down lockers to access the bed boxes. That's really great news because it means that you can get stuff out from underneath without having to disturb the bed or indeed shift people from the sofas. Now you'll notice there's no front sunroof in this model, that's because Quasar still resists that, but instead we do get that fantastic full length sky view roof light, which really does bring plenty of light into the lounge and the kitchen. And of course without a front sunroof you get plenty of lockers. Four around the top here, two of them are shelved. And although the Quasar doesn't have quite as many funky lighting options as the rest of the Luna range, you do get these rather fetching corner units and four spotlights. For what is a pretty affordable caravan, the kitchen is really very well equipped. We've got a separate oven and grill, a dual fuel hob with an electric hot plate and three gas burners, a decent sized fridge, and a few new additions, this rather smart natty splashback here, and a new chrome tap. There are a couple of flaws. I don't particularly like the fact that there's not a vast amount of worktop, and what there is does intrude slightly into the lounge space. And of course, there's only the one socket in here, which is a bit of a shame if you're trying to use lots of electrical devices. What I do like, however, is the fact that the table is stored right at the front, right by the lounge where it's going to be needed. And of course, if you have more needs for electric sockets, over here on the near side, we've got another socket ideally placed. However, plenty of people are more likely to be using that for their TV, because we've also got satellite point, a TV point, and a 12 volt socket. Although, if you'd rather have it elsewhere, there is another of those points on the front shelf. Underneath the sideboard, there's a drawer with a cutlery space, which is useful because there's not one of those in the main kitchen. And beneath that, there's a cupboard, and above, perfectly sighted at a sensible height, you'll find the microwave. This master bedroom area feels particularly well equipped. I mean, there's the obvious things like a reading light each and a shelf, but those shelves are an unusually good size. There's room enough for a book and a mug of tea on them. There's a big roof light overhead and a good sized window, but that window also has this rather nice padded fabric pelmet. It adds to that really classy feel. Ahead, there's a TV mounting point along with all the relevant sockets. Above us, there are three lockers. And then over here on the off side of the van, we've got a massive wardrobe with four sock drawers beneath and what is essentially a dressing table. We've got the little table area here, a set of shelves, a mirror and a socket ideal for your hairdryer. Stand up and you will notice that there's less headroom in the Quasar than in some of the posher models in the Luna range, but for 2017 there are these new flush fitting LED lights which look pretty smart but also mean they don't take away any of that headroom. The bed is huge, and that means a huge underbed storage area, and it's accessible from outside too. You might have noticed a little nibble out of the head end of the mattress. Well, that nibble makes a massive difference in the bathroom, creating a much bigger entranceway and a much more spacious feel. There's plenty of room for changing, plus an enormous shower cubicle that's fully lined and features a drying rail at the top. There's a smoked window with a shelf above, plus an overhead roof light, so it's lovely and bright in here. Plus there's a bowl sink with the new pop-up plug. Plus I like the fact that the blown air outlet for the Truma heating system is right in the middle of the room, so it should warm up nice and quickly. So the Quasar is fundamentally unchanged for 2017, but those little tweaks that have been made have served only to improve what was already a pretty good proposition. And I particularly like this 544, with this massive fixed nearside bed, it's more appealing for someone like me than say the transverse island bed 574, which is much more fashionable, but has a rather more pinched bed space. Overall, it's a very appealing van for a very sensible price. The facilities at Ludlow Touring Park in Shropshire are some of the best that you'll find in the area. There are 135 pitches featuring water, electricity and a TV connection, while the site as a whole offers a laundrette, heated washrooms, a children's play area and Wi-Fi for an additional charge. 
there is full security from the friendly Waldens and the huge pitches are ideal if you want to put up an awning and it's easy to get to from the nearby A49. The site is open all year too, so you can enjoy a stay no matter what the season and a quiet adults only section is available for those who aren't visiting with children. The historic and popular market town of Ludlow is within walking distance. Don't forget to visit the medieval castle while you're there. Ludlow is known as a foodie's paradise too, so those who enjoy top quality dining will feel right at home here. If you're feeling active, there are plenty of options for cycling and walking in the area. Ideal if you brought your dog, who will be welcome on site. Welcome to Ludlow Touring Park. We're a 20 acre site. We've got 135 touring pitches. We've got hard standing, grass, super pitches and RV pitches. And there are five bin points around the park. And we have chemical disposal points and we also have an indoor disposal point that's used during the winter if we have any freezing. Facilities on site, we have a large uh, underfloor heated Titan shower block. In the shower block we've got a disabled facility, we've got a baby uh, facility for little toddlers, normally under five. We also have a large shop which carries uh, quite a few camping accessories. We've got a large dog walk area which people are allowed to go up there and let the dogs off the lead as it's all fenced in. There's a variety of things to do and see in the area. We've got good cycle routes, good walkways. We've got Mortimer Forest within a uh, five, 10 minute cycle ride. Also on the town itself, we've got uh, Dinham Bridge, which there's a large map there, which gives you good cycle routes and walkways in and around the town. And then we also have an extensive information room on site, which where we've got information on all the places that we can recommend. And we also have vouchers for certain places where we can offer deals to our customers. In the town itself, we've got the swim pool. Uh, it's a leisure centre as well. So there's saunas, steam rooms, jacuzzis, and they also have pamper sessions. Just on the edge of town, we've got Monkey Mania, which is an indoor play facility. And approximately 15 minutes drive away, we've got uh, Mickey Miller's, which again, indoor play facility, but it also caters for adults as well. So they're able to enjoy the facilities with the children. Uh, there's National Trust houses and properties within an easy drive, which are also open during uh, inclement weather. This is our first visit here. Um, I think it's called Ludlow Park Touring centre, something like that. It's our first time here, thoroughly enjoying it. We seem to have a rather prime spot next to the pond, which apparently quite a lot of people ask for. We got unexpectedly, so it was a bit of a bonus as far as I'm concerned. We've had two very good food experiences here, so great, great place to go out for. And we even walked into Ludlow, so it's, it's quite accessible as well. This is our first time at this site. It's a very beautiful site with fantastic facilities and very large plots, which is excellent. And it's been so good here, in fact, that we've stayed on for an extra week. We have been to three other Morris Leisure sites and each of them has been outstanding in quality and facilities. I will certainly go back to them. We go into Ludlow and we've been to Ironbridge Gorge and we've been to Stokesay Castle which was a fantastic experience. We've also been to Barrington Hall. Uh, there are lots of places to go to around here and uh, Ludlow itself of course is a very beautiful little town. The twin axle layout allows for a remarkable amount of flexibility in caravan design 
and from that comes innovation. Luna proved that last year with its Delta RI, which won Practical Caravan's Tourer of the Year. It features a transverse island bed at the back and a washroom across the middle. For 2017, Sterling has had a go at a similar layout, but it says it's new and improved. It's called the Sterling Eccles 635, and it's a very good looking caravan. There have been a few extra tweaks for 2017 as well. Up front, there's a carbon fibre effect front gas locker, which looks pretty cool. Combine that with the triple front window, the panoramic front sunroof, black A-frame and these cool graphics. Not to mention the black side skirts, and it's a pretty natty looking caravan. Another change for 2017 is up front here. We've got an external gas point, an external 230 volt point and an external locker. They're all part of the new Lux pack which is expected to cost around the £600 mark and includes inside a rather snazzy illuminated splash pack. I've noticed one improvement over the Delta RI already and that's here. There's no toilet emptying hatch which means it's over on the off side which is great news because it means you won't have to take the toilet out through your awning if you've got one fitted. Talking of sockets, there are two more in the lounge here, although there's only 230 volt sockets, no 12 volt or USB points, which seems a little bit of an oversight. If you went into a 2016 Eccles, this should feel pretty familiar because the Santa Monica furnishings have been carried over and that's no bad thing. I really like the ambience in here, which is not that surprising because it's really quite masculine. You've got the white chrome and piano black finish that marks out Sterling Eccles models compared with the more traditional wood finish of their Swift Challenger twins. At night, pull slats out from beneath the front chest, slide down the cushions and it makes up a good sized double bed for any visiting guests you may have. As well as the Lux pack, Aldi wet central heating is once again available as an option on the Eccles. The controller's here above the door. Alongside it, you'll find the Swift command system. It's motion sensitive and it also links up with your smartphone or tablet to allow you to control and monitor various functions of the van remotely. Alongside the door we've got this rather neat little sideboard with a cupboard down low that faces out so you can grab things when you first arrive on site. There's all the controls you need for a telly here and I'm very pleased to see a telly mount as well so you haven't got to use up that useful little shelf space. Like all twin axle Eccles for 2017 this one's got a tower refrigerator mounted at a sensible height with storage both above and below. Opposite it there's the kitchen and very well equipped it is too. We've got a dual fuel hob, a separate oven and grill and a good sized sink. There's a decent amount of worktop but if you need more there is a pop-up flap. There's loads of cupboards and drawers down low and a couple of lockers up high along with the microwave which is sensibly sited over the sink not the cooker. There's that attractive splashback that I mentioned earlier but only one socket which is a little bit of a shame. The great thing about a central washroom of course is it can be used both by your guests up front and by the owners in the rear master bedroom. This one isn't perhaps quite as spacious as that in the Luna Delta RI but it's really thoughtfully laid out. I particularly like this massive wardrobe here which is shelved as well as giving a decent amount of hanging space. There's a useful little cupboard down beside the loo here, the ideal place to put your bog rolls and it's one of three cabinets in this bathroom. There's a smoked window and a small overhead roof light, maybe a larger one would have made it a little bit brighter in here. Dead ahead there's a vanity unit with a backlit mirror which is very elegant and of course we've got the Beam Me Up Scotty circular shower. There are no shelves in there but the wheel arch does intrude a little bit and actually makes a useful shelf. I'm pleased to see an Aldi wet central heating radiator beneath the towel hooks, ideal for getting them dry. At the back here is the main reason people will buy this van of course, the master suite and a very fine one it is too. We've got a transverse island bed with its head against the offside wall rather than on the near side as in the Delta RI. At the moment it's retracted which gives a good amount of space around the foot of the bed. At night you simply pull out the base as I will do now and drop in a cushion at the top hopefully a bit more elegantly than I've done there and it makes a bed of over six feet long. It really is very generous. I really like these bedside tables. There's one on either side. They're massively spacious, loads of room for piles of books, cups of coffee and glasses and there's a trio of drawers underneath. There are three lockers overhead too 
so there's masses of storage in here. And of course beneath the bed has a huge storage void, although it is where you'll find the spare wheel. Usefully however, we've got external access to it from a locker on the outside, so you don't have to lug the wheel through the van if you have a puncture. In the corner of the room there's a very neat little vanity unit with a couple of cupboards, a mirror and a couple of sockets. And against the near side wall at the foot of the bed, ideally sighted, there's a mount for a TV. I do really like these padded surrounds for the windows. They give a surprisingly luxurious feel to the room. And of course with a window on the side wall and on the rear wall and a roof light, it's lovely and bright. Although it does lack one or two key pieces of equipment such as Alco ATC, once fitted with Aldi wet central heating and a Lux pack, the Sterling Eccles really is nipping at the heels of Sterling's flagship models. So why would you buy one? Well there are a couple of really good reasons. Firstly, it's a lot cheaper and a lot lighter than the Sterling Continental or even the Elite. And secondly, the van you see behind me. The 635 isn't available in either of those ranges and it's a fantastic layout. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back very soon with another show packed with reviews, site visits and top tow cars. In the meantime, you can keep up with us on Facebook, on Twitter or via our website. And don't forget that Practical Motorhome TV follows in just a few minutes. Until next time, goodbye. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV.